Hello. In today's lesson, we are looking at Chapter 10, Section 2, Arcs and Chords. Our objectives are to use the properties of arcs of circles and chords of circles. Central angle, an angle whose vertex is the center of a circle. In this picture over here, this is our central angle. It is located at the center of the circle. Minor arc, part of a circle that measures less than 180 degrees. Minor arcs are named by their endpoints. In this picture over here, the minor arc is AB, and the way we would represent a minor arc, the notation for it would be AB with an arc on top of the letters. Major arc, part of a circle that measures between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Major arcs are named by their endpoints and by a point on the arc. So as you can see over here, our major arc is A, C, B. Oftentimes when we talk about major arcs, they'll have at least three letters in their name. So it would be A, C, B with an arc on top of it. That is our major arc. Semicircle, an arc whose endpoints are the endpoints of a diameter of a circle. In this case, we have a semicircle, so it's half of a circle basically. The angle measure of it would be 180 degrees and it is cut by the diameter of the circle. Measure of minor arc, the measure of its central angle. So in a minor arc, it is the measure of the central angle over here, and remember that that angle has to be less than 180 degrees. Measure of major arc, the difference between 360 degrees and the measure of its associated minor arc. To find the measure of the major arc, you're gonna take the minor arc and subtract it from 360 degrees. And know that that has to be greater than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees. Congruent arcs, two arcs of the same circle or of congruent circles that have the same measure. Postulate 26, arc addition postulate. The measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measure of the two arcs. So the measure of arc A, B, C, which is a major arc, is equal to the measure of arc A, B, plus the measure of arc B, C. This arc, which is A, B, and this arc, which is B, C. When you add A, B plus B, C, you get the arc of A, B, C. Example number one, finding measures of arcs. First, we need to find the measure of arc DG, which looking at DG, it's this arc measure over here that goes all the way through. So I know that the measure of arc DG is the measure of arc DF plus the measure of arc FG. So it's 80 degrees plus 70 degrees, which gives me 150 degrees. Next, I need to find the measure of arc DGH. That's a major arc that's going from D to G and then all the way through to H. We already know the measure of DG that's 150 degrees and then G to H is 120 degrees. If I add 150 and 120 degrees I get that that arc measure is 270 degrees. Finally we need to find the measure of arc DH. That is a minor arc and to find the measure of arc DH what I'll do is I will take the rest of the measures over here so DGH and subtract that from 360 degrees so I have 360 minus 270 and 360 minus 270 gives me 90 degrees. So arc DH is 90 degrees. Let's look at some theorems. Theorem 10.4. In the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. Arc AB is congruent to arc BC if and only if line segment AB is congruent to line segment BC. So if AB is congruent to BC, then we can say that arc AB is congruent to arc BC. Theorem 10.5. If a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and its arcs. If line segment DE is congruent to line segment EF, arc DG is congruent to arc GF. So arc DG is congruent to arc GF if the diameter bisects the chord and creates a perpendicular angle over there. Theorem 10.6, if one chord is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, then the first chord is a diameter. In our picture over here, since this chord JK bisects line ML and creates that perpendicular, then we can say that line segment JK is a diameter of the circle. 
Theorem 10.7. In the same circle or in congruent circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. So line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD if and only if line segment EF is congruent to line segment EG. So if line segment EF is congruent to line segment EG, then we can say that line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD. And then notice that line segment EG and EF are radiuses as they start from the center of the circle. Example 2 using theorem 10.5. In this example we have to find the measure of RKM. Now looking over here at the picture that I have of my circle, I notice that LM goes to the center of the circle, so that is my diameter, and it cuts this chord KN, creating this perpendicular angle. Since it is the diameter, I know that the diameter goes through the center of the circle, cuts the circle in half, which means it cuts chord KN in half, so it bisects it, and I can say that line segment KJ is congruent to NJ. And using theorem 10.5, I know if line segment KJ is congruent to line segment NJ, then I also know that arc K to M is congruent to arc M to N. So I can set those two equal. 5x is equal to 7x minus 16. In order for us to work with positive numbers instead of negative numbers, what the notes decided to do was subtract 5x on both sides. So we ended up with 0 is equal to 2x over here, minus 16, and then add 16 to both sides so you had 16 is equal to 2x divide by 2 on both sides you get that x is equal to 8. I'm not done over here now that I know the value of x I still need to find the measure of arc km. I know that km is 5x so what I'm going to do is take the 8 which is my value for x plug it in over here to the x so it's 5 times 8 and I got that 5 times 8 is 40 so the measure of arc km is 40 degrees. Example 3 using theorem 10.7. In this question we are to find QS if we know that MN is 16 and RT is 16. So MN is this length over here, that's 16, and QT is this length over here, this is 16. Now looking at this picture, I notice that I've got two chords that are bisected by the radius over here. So I can use theorem 10.7 knowing that I have two chords that are congruent, and since the two chords are congruent, then this is my radius, this length and these lengths are equidistant from the center to the chord and from the center to the chord that they have the same distance. Once I know that, I can go about solving for the length of QS. Because line segment MN and RT are congruent chords, they are equidistant from the center. Line segment PQ is congruent to line segment QS. To find QS, first find PN. So if I need to find QS over here, I need to first find the measure of PN because I don't have enough information to find QS but I do have enough information to find PN and since these two are equal once I find PN I can say that QS is the same as PN. Looking over here line segment PQ is perpendicular to line segment MN which means that line segment PQ bisects line segment MN and because MN is 16 I can find the measure of PN by taking 16 and dividing by 2 because we remember that bisects means to cut in half. So 16 divided by 2 is is 8. So line segment PN is 8. Now to find the measure of PQ, this is a right triangle, which means I'm using the Pythagorean theorem. My hypotenuse is 10, so I have A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Let's say that A squared is PQ, which is our unknown, so we'll leave that as A squared, plus B squared, which is 8, is equal to our hypotenuse, which is 10, and that's square, so it's 8 squared, 10 squared, and then A squared plus 64 is equal to 100. A squared is equal to 100 minus 64, which is 36. A is the square root of 36, which is 6. The notes just skip this step over here because 6, 8, and 10 are a Pythagorean triple. They knew that PN was 8 and NQ was 10, so they said, well, that is a 6, 8, 10 right triangle using the Pythagorean triple. Finally, use PQ to find QS because line segment QS is congruent to line segment PQ. QS is equal to PQ, which is 6. All right, checkpoint problem number one and two are yours. In problem number one, you are to use theorem 10.5 to find the measure of arc RS. In problem number two, find HK if DG is equal to JL, which is equal to 24, and DH is equal to 13. All right, that's it from me. I'll see you all soon.